is it. We're leaving the Society Islands, leaving French Polynesia. So yeah, here we go. 1,700 nautical miles to go. So this is typical of uh, one of our departure dates. Um, uh, the alternator is not working, so I've got the generator on, kind of charging the batteries. Um, and uh, we're making some water as well before the passage because uh, sometimes in rough passage it's not possible to use the water maker so we're just topping that up as well. There was just this massive wave that came and it just knocked over everything and we're in a storm the wind's going up to like 25 knots sometimes there's a storm over there it's not so, it doesn't look so bad but it is really bad. The thing is these squalls are so unpredictable so they kind of they either change direction and pick up or they just intensify really quickly. So it's really difficult to be prepared, especially when it's a dark night, you can't even see where they are. You and me, we're family. The bond that we share is as deep as the sea. No matter how rough things may come to be. You and me, we're family. Sing So I've just found a blown fuse in the uh, at the alternator and uh, found out that I've got the the regulator, the WS500 regulator, wired up in the wrong place. Um, it should be on one of the screws, not the other. It should be on the the uh, low current screw and not the high current screw, uh, which I've only just found out about. Uh, so I've just got a, a very nice email off uh, Rick from Wakespe. So uh, I think the alternator is uh, out of action until we get to Fiji now, because uh, to get to that screw, I've got to take off. The, uh, one of the bus bars, um, which I haven't really got time to do now. So we've got the generator on, uh, just charging the batteries and we'll have to rely on solar and the prop gen for uh, charging en route. It's looking about 20 knots, 30 gusting, which uh, is kind of more than we would normally sort of like to leave with, but uh, it's behind us all the way, so uh, the apparent wind shouldn't be too bad, and at least we're not beating into the, the wind. Uh, get the boys motivated to do some schooling before we go yeah and then we should be off uh, we've got to get the dinghy up and then we should be heading off to Fiji on a 10 to 12 day journey it's still me to do that don't let go of that, you need to clip it down by the um, stanchion don't let the other end go either So we're just going to Fiji that what will take 12 or 10 days. So yeah, it'll be very, very sad that we're leaving for 12 days. Nearly the, um, the time of the Atlantic. No, actually the Pacific as well. So it's the second, no, the third longest passage we've done. So because Rowan's left, uh, Darry and me have to take a step up. So Darry's doing one and a half hours and I'm doing one and a half hours just to break it up for the parents and to do some night watches. Um, but obviously they're gonna sleep in the cockpit because if anything does go wrong, I can just wake them up right in the cockpit. And yeah, the, the things that we have to look out for is wind, like if it winds, any smell of burning, it logs in the water, whales in the water, loads of things in the water and wind change and yeah and boats lights in the water and bombies actually so yeah that's the only things actually they're right in our boat. i can hear them oh they're loving it woody can you hear them oh they're escorting us out this is a good omen no they're going away so some dolphins just came we saw there's a trip of boats and we were wondering why they were here and then we came, kind of went closer and then it turns out they were looking at dolphins and they just came here and I could hear them and now they've gone away. So I know this passage is going to be a good passage. A pot of dolphins in the middle of the bay and all the trip of boats around them. And uh, you know, on the whole they're okay, they're trip of boats, they, kind of, they cut their engines like they should do but then uh, you get the inevitable jet ski pack that then sort of just comes out of nowhere and just... Oh, just destroys the whole scene you know there's no secret my feelings towards jet skis and uh, that just confirms it come on 
wouldn't it be cool driving a jet ski, like going zooming fast? Like we like doing on dinghy, and plus jet skis are faster. So I can imagine they're a lot of fun, but not around wildlife. Sorry. Well, would you not mind jet skis if they're like out there, zoom like? Well, I just think that they're dangerous, noisy, horrible, selfish things, and it's just. It's not the jet skis themselves, it's the people who drive them. You know, they're driving too close to shore, they don't look where they're going. So would you hate it if I, if I was driving a jet ski? If you learn how to drive it properly, then no. It's a bit rolly, but we got the pole out, so it's less rolly, but still very rolly. So we're off, this is it. We're leaving the Society Islands, leaving French Polynesia, heading west to all the way to Fiji, because nothing else is open in between really. Um, it feels good. We had the engine on and I hate it with the engine on, and as soon as you turn it off, it's just nice and the boat just moves so beautifully with this wind. It, she's just a wonderful boat. I have a lot of confidence in this boat and the person that looks after it as well. And um, you know, it's a good strong boat. Everything I look at, I think, yeah, that's strong. That'll hold this, that'll hold that. You know, it just feels good. So, um, had an amazing time in Bora Bora. I've always wanted to go there and um, it was really good. So, um, and I'm happy to be going. I feel good about it. I'm just exhausted because I've been up since four downloading charts. Um, so I didn't get much sleep, but um, it feels good. This just feels right, this, this whole, with the sail up and everything. So yeah, here we go. 1,700 nautical miles to go. So this is day two of our passage um, from Bora Bora to Fiji. Um, we started off some good winds, but obviously there's swell because we're out in the Pacific Ocean. Um, it's always kind of tiring on the first few days, I think, where your body readjusts to different sleep patterns. So we've got to watch this in place um, where it goes day and night. Start in the morning, Woody does seven till 10, Darry does 10 to 11.30, and then I do sort of around lunchtime, 11.30 to 2.30. Ewan does 2.32, 4, and then we all do 4 till 7, and then Woody does 7 till 1 in the morning. Darry comes up on again and does 1 in the morning till 2.30 in the morning, and I do 2.30 till 5.30, so I do 3 hours sort of middle of the night, and then Ewan comes on again at 5.30 till 7, and start it all again. But yeah, it always takes a while for your body to be adjusted and catch sleep where you can really. But yeah, it's a bit swelly, it's picking up, and the wind's due to pick up, which is good because we go a bit faster. Um, we've just got our main Genoa out, the whole Genoa out, pulled out, and we've got our whole mizzen out. And we're kind of just passing through some last sort of few islands, really. We're passing Malpila, Malpija, and um, another nature reserve called Manau. I don't think you can get into there. But yeah, just sort of tired, really. I'm not really wanting to eat much. As everything's just slopping about. Okay, so one of the things that happens when we um, sail is that well, I, I kind of, I sort of go off a lot of different types of food and I kind of tend to want to eat cold, wet things like smoothies, fruit, salads and stuff like that. And, and veggie stuff, really. I go right off meat when I'm sailing. Um, and I like to eat things like, you know, ratatouille and, and, and plain stuff. And um, the kids are probably a bit similar to me. They tend to kind of go off certain things and want to eat more of other things. Well, I feel like it's a kind of sardine. Oh. I'm having a baguette with lettuce and sardines because I've never tried sardines in a cat. Today was the first day I've ever tried tinned sardines and they're very good and I've tasted a new thing today and I like it. I've been on pasture sometimes and I've not been able to eat and my stomach just starts getting 
knotted up and empty and the less you eat the more sick you feel and um, it's like a vicious circle really so the only way to get out of it is to force yourself to eat and try and get back onto normal again so I kind of like encourage people to eat what they can really um, you know within reason but you know it's like when someone sees it it's just like eat whatever you can to keep your fluids and your minerals and salts and stuff up so even if it's packets of crisps in the end or whatever. Woody doesn't feel it at all. He's, he's, he's kind of, his stomach doesn't really change when he's at sea. He's kind of, he'll eat anything, you know, at sea, so it doesn't make a difference. So um, these squalls are coming and they're bringing winds sort of m more than 30 knots of wind. Because um, you include our boat speed, then yeah, it's probably like 35 knots, maybe more, um, and a lot of rain. So um, I've managed to reduce the sail completely to next to nothing. Um, and we're just going sort of downwind. Yeah, it's like, Everything's soaking wet now, and um, yeah, we've just got like tiny bit of dinner out, pretty much. The thing is, these squalls are so unpredictable, so they kind of they either change direction and pick up, or they just intensify really quickly. So it's really difficult to be prepared, especially when it's a dark night. You can't even see where they are. So you've just got to, I think, just go easy at night, and then until you can see a bit more in the daytime. swell's picked up and it's pretty much all over the place really I think it's just not sort of consistent waves that you can sail nicely over it's just this the whole time so it's really exhausting and um, it's really hard to sort of digest food because the stomach really can't get a rest because it's constantly working like all your muscles so yeah it's these the next few days I think it'll be really difficult I spend the day Haunted by your sight Hiding away Curves away the light I remember you Fading out of you You're a memory now You're all faded and brown and I just saw this fish. At first I thought it was one of Daddy's woods, but then it was squidgy. That is awesome. It's purple. How did it get down there? Dad says that there was a uh, wave, a big wave, so he thinks it came through. Wait, there might be spiny fish on the desk. All I can see is a mango skin. Ewan, get in. Good evening, this is night three of our passage to Fiji and uh, so far it's gone smoothly, it's quite rolly and uh, we're on almost a dead run um, which makes it a bit difficult with manoeuvrability. Um, the only thing that's happened tonight is we've had a cargo vessel which uh, was sort of on a collision course with us. Uh, at one point it was going to be within 200 metres of us and it's a 130 metre cargo vessel so uh, that was a bit worrying, but I think he turned about five degrees to starboard, um, so he's going to pass uh, by our stern, which is a bit of a relief. That's it. The crew are feeling uh, not too bad, although they still can't go down below to cook anything, so I'm kind of chief cook. A, a group of boats which left with us, um, and they've kind of gone ahead now. They're all catamarans, so they're going a bit faster than us. Um, but I do wonder how they're coping with these rolly conditions, because uh, it's not pleasant. So that's it, it's uh, 11 o'clock, I think I'm going to make myself a nice uh, cocoa now, uh, keep me awake for the next few hours, uh, then uh, Darry's coming on at 1 o'clock. So, on our watches we each have our own song, but my song's called Thunder, and so when it started I woke up and I just stood next to the phone waiting for it to say Thunder, and then as soon as it said Thunder, the word thunder, I ran up here and then I always run up and forget that I need like my 
I need my uh, hoodie. I need my life jacket. And yeah, I just come up in my pajamas. Well, I don't really sleep in my pajamas. I sleep in my clothes because it's easier. I got snacks and water. Mm, yeah. mm. I used to have so many, but I started to feel sick. And when I was refilling my box, because I refill this box every day, so every watch I get some, I I nearly like I nearly puked. So I only have things that have chocolate in them. You don't really have to do anything. You just listen to an audio book, look around, check the wind. It's basically just looking, smelling, and hearing, and that's it. There was just this massive wave that came, and it just knocked over everything. Like, it nearly went to the get and guardrails. And it's like, wow, that was a very big wave. And we're in a storm, the wind's going up to like 25 knots sometimes. It went up to 28 knots actually at once, and it, here is like there's there's a storm over there. It's not so it doesn't look so bad, but it is really bad. And reminds me of the passage to the Galapagos. That was like really bad. So what I like about my watch is that I always get to see the um, sunset, orange color going over the solar panels, and it's really nice. So another night watch over and uh, day watch begins. Uh, Ewan's gone off, I'm back on. Um, it was rather a rolly night. I've put a bit more canvas out. Um, it seems to kind of ease the rolling a little bit and uh, quicken this up. Um, we tend to kind of be a bit overcautious on the night by putting an extra reef in, but I'm not sure that it actually helps the situation because it just just feels more lulloppy and rolly. Um, so we're still looking at about another week to go. Um, I just uh, hope these sea conditions calm down a bit because it's exhausting. Uh, we've got about three to four meters of swell um, right on the um, aft quarter, which means it's rolling us around like a corkscrew. So, uh, and it's almost impossible to do anything down below. So, we've all got our um, audio books that we listen to while I'm watch. I've just finished uh, listening to uh, Constantine Christian's. Uh, immigrants love letter to the west and now I'm reading or listening to this is marketing by Seth Godin I don't know why I'm interested in marketing because I've got nothing to do with marketing but it's just find it kind of interesting just the whole psychology of it anyway that's it I'm gonna make myself a cup of tea and bed in and then the next watch on is 10 o'clock which is Darry. Day four, um, feeling a bit tired because uh, we've been doing night watches. My brother and me have been doing night watches every night. And um, yeah, I think the rocking of the boat and tiredness just doesn't mix. Yeah, I'm feeling a bit more like Darry, I think. Um, like I'm still feeling tired. It's not like I feel sleepy. I just don't feel like eating because nothing really digests because everything's moving around so much. So. It's like what you can eat and then digest is really the big thing. And it's exhausting because everything's moving and getting up. And in the middle of the night, I'm up every single night. So I don't really get a decent night's sleep. I try and sleep before and after, but somehow that doesn't really do it. So, um, and the waves are just built, built and, and the boat's just moving even more. So, and it's that awful kind of like, you just can't, you think about how long you've got, and then you don't really want to think about it because it doesn't really help. So um, until we're kind of at least halfway, so then it helps because then you know you're counting down. But yeah, it's survival really for me. I'll show you how big the waves are. But I'm pretty happy to see Fiji because it's going to be a very interesting 
but it's a very long passage and it's rocky. Soup. Best thing to make on passage on a really rocky passage is soup because it goes everywhere and it comes up the same way as it goes down. I crave tomato soup and I helped dad make it and it's like so good. This is so good. going on with this suit? So um, very rocky. So uh, as you can see, we haven't had a, such a pleasant seat. I basically finished with my suit down there. That's the suit there. Yeah, tomato soup on a rocky passage. Best combination. Despite the mess of the soup, it is really nice to drink. Fresh homemade tomato soup it's I think when you feel like eating very much or digesting very much this that goes down really well it goes down everywhere really well <laughs> so day four Apokhitistan the return and already we're talking about which member of crew we'd eat if we run out of food um, so far I think Ewan has got the, the vote because uh, he's, he's a bit more tender than the rest of us but apparently that I should be on the top of the menu because I'm fatter it's, uh, it's still very squally, conditions down below are very kind of uh, rolly, nobody likes to be down below. Um, so we're trying to keep meals quite simple. Um, but obviously there's the washing up to do afterwards, so you kind of... I think that's the thing about being at sea, it's like it's not about just about keeping the meal simple um, on, the, on the recipe side, it's about prep as well. You know, you can't use too many bowls for prep, you can't leave too much washing up, because that just ends up all over the floor. So you've got to keep things like, like wraps uh, are good. Um, what else do we, we do? Just bowls of pasta or bowls of anything really, bowls of cereal. Sometimes we go surfing down the waves at 13 knots, it's crazy. But um, we just got, well we've got two reefs in the Genoa and that's it, hold out. And um, it seems to be all holding well, autopilot seems to be working well. So everyone's just reading, listening to audiobooks, sleeping, eating really, that's about it. Yeah, it's kind of hard work, it's tiring, but uh, it's supposed to die off in a few days, but then we've got to deal with probably not enough wind. So it's never right, is it? But yeah, we're doing okay. So night watches have just begun again, and um, we're just looking at the uh, weather routing. We just uh, downloaded it uh, about an hour ago, and um, it looks as though we're in for some uh, quite heavy winds tomorrow. Force uh, one, two, three, four. Uh, well, force four, I think. Um, Possibly up to six, um, depending on which uh, which uh, model you follow. So stay tuned for more adventures as we sail around the world. If you want to find out how to fix your boat, go to our Mothership Maintenance channel. And if you've got any questions you want to ask us, join our Patreon family. I had a dream last night about a boat. It was pink and green with stripy mast. It had spotty sails and a golden flag. I said, hey. Last night